Today we have a big wrestling news day. We're talking about AEW and WWE. As always, timestamps in the description down below. And if you guys want more videos like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button. As you know, it definitely is appreciated. I want to jump into our first story of the day. We're going to talk about AEW full gear. Uh, and this is actually really interesting to me because I think a lot of people see me as being critical of AEW and their booking. Well, we got to talk about the pay-per-view buys because this is a good indicator of people's interest uh, for AEW. It's not a tell-all scenario, but of course, with AEW and pay-per-view buys, it's a big part of their business. Uh, they don't do things the traditional way in terms of, you know, now the new norm is kind of like the streaming, monthly subscriptions. Uh, nonetheless, the pay-per-view uh, early estimate, according to Dave Meltzer, uh, based on early estimates, Full Gear did about 132,000 and 135,000 pay-per-view buys. Now, keep in mind, this is actually considerably down from the previous year. Uh, AEW Full Gear was at about 145,000 pay-per-view buys, according to WrestleNomics. Um, so, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to say this and make it look like AEW did a bad job with the pay per view because honestly, uh, the pay per view build was not interesting. Um, but the pay per view, obviously, and I say this all the time, AEW pay per views they're always going to feature great matches, even if the storyline may not be what I enjoy. Their pay per view matches are really really good. They always feel like a big deal. But there's a reason for AEW getting less buys than the previous year. Now, one thing to consider is the economy, right? Obviously, the economy is changing. And because of that, obviously, some people may not feel comfortable paying, you know, 50, 60, 70 dollars. Um, one thing that is also very good for AEW to keep in mind uh, is the the million dollar gate. Uh, it was roughly over a million forty one million forty thousand, you know, one million and forty thousand dollars. So, you know, the, the number being down a little bit. The ratings haven't necessarily grown to, to WWE levels. It, it's not an area of concern, but what this tells me is that AEW just needs to get back on track with storytelling. Um, and and I, think, I think a lot of this will be resolved when AEW finally gets ROH its own TV show. I, I think AEW just needs to get back to being consistently good at storytelling because that is something that's actually one of their best strengths is their ability to like tell good stories. Um, but the problem is when you're not doing it enough or when, when your focus becomes something else, it, it becomes noticeable. And I think people have realized that. And that's not just an opinion, but when you look at the numbers, they're obviously down for a reason. So you could try to come up with a million factors. I think it is literally a culmination of everything, but it is important uh, for people to understand that if you want AEW to grow and to succeed, it starts with your television product. And if you start to see the ratings dip a little bit, if you're starting to see social media engagement dip a little bit, and then, of course, pay-per-view buys dip, that tells me that it's not an area of concern, right? It doesn't mean that things are going downhill. It just means that the growth that people are expecting from AEW is not necessarily where it needs to be. Growth happens throughout a period of time. It doesn't happen overnight, and that's why I really want to be very clear on that. Uh, it's it's really important people understand that. Another factor as to why maybe pay-per-view buys are down is because CM Punk. Uh, obviously, the drama with AEW has gotten very interesting. I, I, I don't like talking about this scenario anymore because it's literally, you know, the elite, uh, you know, they're on television, they're mocking CM Punk. There's a lot of people at this point, now they're starting to question if this was actually a work. Very interestingly, though, this was being talked about uh, Brian Alvarez uh, during a live chat uh, that basically Punk, CM Punk is the one who is looking to get a contract buyout. And, well, AEW doesn't necessarily want to do that. Uh, this is a really strange thing. Brian Alvarez coming out saying that Punk wants the buyout. Why would AEW want the buyout? You know, it's it's a very, very strange scenario that is happening here. But AEW not wanting the buyout would honestly make a lot of sense. But then you got to consider everything else that is in play here. There, There's people talking about lawsuits and all of these different things. If I'm AEW, what is the quickest way to move on? I mean, that's what this all comes down to. What is the quickest way to move on from all of this stuff? Because I think it's like a, a strange situation to be in. If you're really not interested in CM Punk, right? If you're really, really not interested in CM Punk, if you've made it clear that you're moving forward with the elite, all of these different things, what is the quickest way to move on? 
Will it cost you some money? Sure. Is it hard to make that decision? Absolutely. CM Punk is obviously a big asset to AEW. But ultimately, I think if you're going to keep CM Punk under contract, not release him, not do a contract buyout, what would be the purpose of that? You know, at this point, if you're AEW, if it's inevitable that he's going to leave, why not just move on? And that's where I think it becomes a very interesting situation. I I still don't even know what to think of this whole situation anymore. Up until recently, I never really thought it was a work. You know, I I mentioned in the beginning, hey, it could potentially be a work. But now I don't see it as such because when you look at the situation, you know, I always say, why would you make your your company look bad? But that's kind of where we're at with the situation. And it kind of sucks because if it's all very real, uh, why not just move on from it? And um you know, I'm sure Tony Khan probably has an answer to that, but he's not really answering questions on the scenario, and I get it, but it's just kind of where we're at with it. And for our final story of the day, we're talking about WWE. We're talking about Uncle Howdy. Guys, WWE has been doing a lot of teases. They have been doing a lot of vignettes. They have been doing a lot of, of Easter eggs. Interestingly enough, it appears that WWE is teasing the reveal of Uncle Howdy. Now, I believed when Uncle Howdy was revealed to the WWE Universe, it was Bray Wyatt. Different character, kind of like how he was the Fiend. And technically, anything is possible. But based on the vignette that we just saw on the Black Friday episode of SmackDown, it appears to me that Uncle Howdy is going to be an actual character that is not Bray Wyatt. Uh, So a couple things that you need to know. WWE is teasing something. In the vignette, there was also a female voice. That is very intriguing to me. Uh, WWE is teasing the coming of Uncle Howdy. When you look at Uncle Howdy, a lot of people see resemblance to Bo Dallas. A lot of people see resemblance to his father. Who is Uncle Howdy? WWE is set to reveal this. When will it happen? My best guess is that it's going to happen at Survivor Series War Games. I, I think that would be a little too soon. I would like to see WWE kind of draw this out a little bit more. But Uncle Howdy is teasing the unmasking of himself. On the screen, it shows that it's coming. They got phone numbers on the screen. When you call the phone number, it's Bray Wyatt's psychiatrist. You know, this is a very, very interesting story because Bray Wyatt is being the good guy. He doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to fight uh, LA Knight. But here we are. Uncle Howdy is telling him he has to do it. So what is the storyline here? going forward after Uncle Howdy gets revealed. That's what I want to see. Um, I, I like the idea of that we're getting to see like a personalized version of Bray Wyatt, but also at the same time too, it would be nice to see Bray Wyatt kind of have something like the Fiend character, which is initially what I thought Uncle Howdy was. So nonetheless, WWE is teasing the reveal. It's it's coming soon. We know that. WWE is finally teasing it. They're not playing games with it anymore. Like these vignettes are, are legitimate things. So I'm excited about it. I'm, I want to see where it goes. Uh, a lot of good things happening in wrestling these days. So if you love wrestling, this is a channel to subscribe to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.